Okay, so um, we are back in the series because uh, we, we kind of blew up. <laughs> oh my. But yeah, so that was basically um, what happened when I saw those. We <laughs> so, uh, so I realized you guys really like this series. So why not continue? <laughs> but yeah. So uh, in this episode, we're gonna use time dot delta time, um, and we're gonna be using input dot get access to get movement for players. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um. Uh, j just open up your movement script, uh, and let's get started. All right. So first, you need uh, a simple understanding of um what time dot delta time is and why we are using it and what input dot get access does <laughs> so um first off what i want you to do is just yoink and yoink away these x and z values and i want you to make two float values actually make one float value name it x value and set this equal to input dot get access horizontal times time dot, dot time times move speed so here I want you to add a new variable that should be a float and then we can make this set this to move speed and then let's set this like uh, 10 Um, and yeah, so a little extra what I wanted to do, I wanted to show you guys, is there's this thing named a serialized field. Let me write this down and then I'll show you. So what serialized field does, uh, just add in your semicolons and then control S to save. Yeah, Z value doesn't exist yet, but let me actually fix that. Um, so... Uh, control C, Control V, and then change this to Z value, and yeah, change this to vertical. Control S to save. The error should go away. Alright, so now if you open up your player and look in your movement attachment, aka components, you will see this movement speed thingy. You can change this to 20 and this will overwrite the value that is inside the script. So let's say you put 10 here and we change it through the inspector to 20. Through a serialized field, it will basically overwrite. So it's pretty nice on what serialized field is. So uh, just get your notepad and type in... Um, makes the variable s customizable I don't know if I spelled that right in the inspector just write that down in, in your notepad so you never forget it. because it's a pretty it, it's pretty handy to use alright so now let me explain all of this because you are like probably like what is it? <laughs> so, um, basically, you need to first understand the update function. Uh, and also, we will be putting this inside of a method. Uh, we'll also be learning about methods. So, what is a method? A method is a, um, or let me just explain what update does. So, y'all know update, uh, y'all, I think you should know this since I explained like five times, but for if you don't know yet, uh, it basically is, um, update basically just the whatever is inside the update will happen every single fps that runs on your pc but now what we did is we moved the player with transform.translate every single time that this update function runs so every fps the player will be moving 
And this is pretty unfair because some players with stronger PCs might have the advantage since they their uh, their FPS runs faster, which means they move faster as well. And of course, that's that's really that, that's just un that's just unfair <coughs> for the players with bad PCs, uh, and that's just unfair for the people with less good PCs. And that would basically just be pay to win. And of course, um, if you're a cool person and you are a epic gamer, then you wouldn't like to have that in your game. So that's why we use time dot delta time. Time dot delta time basically detects how much FPS the player has, and then um, uh, does this update function in a known amount of time. So every player has, so it it runs the update function every single time fairly no matter what fps the player has and i really love time at that time and i'm pretty much guilty of using it every single second so um uh, yeah but every time you're using something inside of the update function uh, most of the time you will just be adding a time at that time to it since it's probably just the best thing to do <laughs> so yeah uh if you now know what time that time is that's pretty cool uh, and what this star does, it basically multiplies uh, this value by this value. And what we do is input dot get axis horizontal. So let me show you guys something. When you go to edit and you go to project settings and you look for the input manager, it should look something like this. Some, for, for some people, it's just like here. You should just bring it up and then just bring it into the center of the screen or something and you should be chilling. Then you should see this thing named axis. Open that up and you will see all of these different things. Horizontal, vertical, fire one, fire two, fire three, jump, mouse X, mouse Y, mouse scroll wheel, horizontal, vertical, fire one, fire two, fire three, some uh, jump, some bit, some bit, cancel. So these are all built in um, input inputs that you can that the player can access and unity has set these one these ready for us and what this does is is we look for horizontal we will say a and d or left and the right arrow will basically move us uh in the um in the x axis as you can see um and same goes for vertical but then with w and s and then on the y axis so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use input dot get axis and then we'll get the horizontal. So when the player has put any inputs, like if he has touched anything on his keyboard, then it will first check if it is the A or the D key. If it is, then this variable will be assigned to that. Then it will multiply this by time dot delta time just so it's fairly speed for every single player. Then we multiply this again by our movement speed so we can always customize the speed that we want the player to run in. Then we do the same thing for the Z value, but then just with the vertical. So now if we control S to save, this should all be working perfectly. Control S, save. Don't forget your semicolons. And then we should be good to go. So now click in your game tab. And if you walk, you can always move around. And it has this little smooth movement ability. So if you want this to become faster, we can always use our movement speed serialized fielded variable. And if you want, you can also use decimal numbers since it's a flow value. For me, I'm going to check how 15 looks, and let me see if that's a good one. And yeah, actually no, 15 is a bit too fast. Let me check 12.5. Hmm, let me see. Yeah, okay, I think this is uh, good. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm just going to keep it at 10. All right, so for me, I'm going to put this at 10. And remember, it will always overwrite the value inside of the serialized fields. So always, if you change it through the inspector, we'll always overwrite it. So let's say this becomes 50, then it will basically be set to 50. 
Let's also realize field works. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I already explained that. So um, yeah. And let's let me see one thing. Oh yeah. So uh, like I said, methods. We're gonna be using methods. So methods are also known as functions. They are pretty popular and they are used for organization usually. So just type in void move player. Go to the next line, add in some curly brackets and put in the code, control S, command S, uh, I mean control C, C, command C if you're a Mac and control C, V and command V if you're a MacBook and then paste it inside of our move player. So now we are, so how this works is a method. What is a method? It's basically a block of code that will happen when it's being called. This is really important, remember this. A method will never work or do anything until it's been called inside of an actual function. You might be thinking, how do you call the method? Well, this is basically how. You get the name of the method. For example, uh, let's get the name here. Um, move player, that's the name of our method. As you can see, this is always the name of the method. Then uh, you can always get this method, open, close parentheses, and a semicolon. And you might be thinking, Ennis, why did you not put a semicolon in front of the void move player? And that, like, why did you not put this here? Never, but never put a semicolon after a function is called. These are only supposed to be set after variables are made after, uh, for example, transfer or translate. But never set a semicolon in front of a function. So here we're putting void. What is void? You might be thinking. Basically, we can also put this to a bool. We can set this to a string. We can set this to float. This is basically what type of variable we want to be returned. But in this case, we don't want any very like we don't need any variable that is going to be returned, and that's why we put void because we don't need any returned values. Then we have move player. This is basically what the name of this um is basically what the name of the function is. Um, for me, I'm going to put this to move player because that's what the what we're basically doing in this method. And we have these open close brackets. What these do is they basically are parameters. Sometimes we'll be using parameters, sometimes not. Until we use these, you don't need to worry about them. They are just a few. This it's just a bit of data that's going to be passed while it's going to be um, called. But in my most cases, you won't need any parameters, and we don't need any in this case. Then we have our curly brackets. Whatever's in these curly brackets will happen when our function is fired. So when we call our function, whatever is inside of this um, curly brackets will happen. For example, let's say we have a debug.log that will print something down in our output, aka our console, when we call when inside of these curly brackets, then every time when we call this function, so when we call this method, it will print that debug.log out inside of our console. So that's just a basic understanding of move player. And what were you of uh, methods? So we can, um, actually, no, no, no. Um, so while we're using methods, is methods are being used so we can organize our code. Let's say we have all of this. Don't do this with me. Don't do this with me. So just watch along. Don't do this with me. Please don't. So, um, so we have a debug.log, and then it will say, moving player and then we have another debug.log debug.log instructions here and let's say we put like all of our instructions uh, slash slash if you don't know what slash slash does it makes a comment a comment is um just a little bit of text that you can make notes for and this won't affect any of your scripts since it's a comment. 
Uh, and let's say we're printing our instructions. So let's do instructions here. Just I like they were instructions that were printed down. Then we would have to look, and we had a, like a more complex code. We would have to look inside of our this update, and we would have to look for like which. If, let's say we wanted to change something. We would have to look all the way in this code and like read all of it one by one to check which part of code does what. But if we use a method, all we'd have to do is just call the method inside of our update. And then if we want to change anything, we can always look back inside of our method so it's all organized and we can always find where we can change stuff. Okay, so a little uh, micro challenge here, just a little cut challenge. If you paid attention, you would know how to call a function. And I want you to do that right now. Take on this challenge. It's fine if you can, it's totally fine. But just try to do this. Uh, you can look back in the video and uh, I will see you then. Okay, fellas, let's get to it. So let's first call the name of our function move player. Open close parentheses. This is really important because we're calling a method. Then we use our semicolon, and then this is how we call a function. So now if we control S to save, this should be all organized and it should be working. So we are chilling, boys. We are chilling. We are chilling. And yes, it sure does. So, um, yeah, that was it for this tutorial. Um, all right, so you know what? Let me just do one last thing. So now if you walk off our platform, our player will still be standing. And uh, I don't think y'all want that. So how we can fix this is inside of our player uh, prefab, we can add in a component. And this is going to be named a rigid body. A rigid body is basically used for physics and graph and like basically just phys physics so this can be used for any type of physics but yeah you will be using this a lot so now if we play again we we'll walk off the platform we will fall down because we have a rigid body with use gravity on and this will basically make us use the gravity is <laughs> it basically is self-explanatory um, but let's say I want to, f I don't want my player to rotate. I don't want it to rotate because if we'll be adding obstacles to this game, we will like have them touching the player and then the player will like fall down. Like they will rotate all the way. How we can fix this and we can go to constraints, click on that little arrow, go to freeze rotation and click on all of them. Now the player is not able to rotate. And we also want to put off Y axis so in freeze position so the player cannot go up and down because we don't want the player to be flying of course <laughs> unless if you want that to be a feature <laughs> but yeah that's only fine if you want that to be a feature <clears throat> actually let's not do that because then the player cannot actually <laughs> fall down <laughs> like i said um yeah now we have some cool physics and we can rotate our character and it will basically just not poof will not new new rotate cool uh anyways gamers um blow this video up like this one <laughs> what what Bro uh. oh, 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 oh. y'all see that blowing up bro I'm, I'm i'm famous boys claim your famous tickets claim your og tickets now boys Claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it. I'm actually so happy right now. Let's go. Claim your OG tickets, boys. Leave a comment. Be a cool, a uh, cool epic gamer. See you later, alligator.